Hey, what is up everyone? BG here back with another quick video and summer vacation is on for me. That means I'll be hopefully posting more videos. Anyways, today we're going to talk about IA blasters. They have been in our phones for a while in the past, but now not so much. So do we really need them on our smartphones in 2017? Let's find out. First, let us talk about what IR blasters actually are. They are modules that emit infrared sensors to control devices that are usually operated by remotes. To put that in layman's terms, you can look cool using a smartphone. You can not only control your air conditioner, but a ton of other devices. You can control TVs, air coolers, projectors, and basically anything that comes with a remote. Well, most of the remotes. Let me first explain how I, as a consumer, use this in my day to day life. When I come into my house and can't find the AC remote, which is often, I just use my smartphone to control the AC temperature. When I make videos, I actually have to turn on the LED light strips for B roll. For that, I can use the IR blaster as well. And one of the most interesting things I just came to know about is that I can manually set the focus of my DSLR using this IR blaster. You can probably relate this if you are a YouTuber who shoots alone and you know how much of a hassle it is to set the focus by yourself when you are shooting yourself. This means you can also make your professor angry by turning off that projector on and off when he's taking a lecture. But you probably shouldn't do that, you'll get suspended, trust me. Now that we know how IR blasters came into play, let us find out when. The first IR blaster that was fit into a phone was back in 2002. This was a Samsung Trio 180. It shipped with Palm OS, not Android, not iOS. They didn't exist back then. Let that sink in. But I'm not sure if that phone could control other devices using that IR blaster or if the software provided an interface for it. This trend of including IR blasters in Android smartphones, however, started in 2013 with the HTC One M7. This was then followed by LG and then back in Samsung Android phones. After 2014, companies like Xiaomi, Lyco and Huawei started including this in their devices. But now in 2017, the number of devices that actually use an IR blaster are reducing. Samsung stopped adding them in their phones back in 2016. So back to our question, do we need IR blasters in our smartphones in 2017? So I guess this answer entirely depends on what kind of a person you are. This is because every single person's needs are different. For example, NFC is something I love, but before Android Pay, a very few number of manufacturers seem to care about NFC or including it into their devices. But back up, let us look at it from the manufacturer's point of view. Every device is now turning smart. Your TV is now a smart TV. You can now control your air conditioners using the apps on your phones. Head toothbrushes can be connected to your phone via Bluetooth. Since all of these appliances are turning smart, I guess it is justified for not having an IR blaster on your phone for controlling these devices. And any module, in spite of how small they are, do add up to the cost of the manufacturing of the phone. But if you ask me, I'd love to have an IR blaster installed on my smartphone. But then again, I couldn't find how much it costs to add an IR blaster into a smartphone. So I cannot say one must include this in their smartphone. Does your phone actually have an IR blaster? Check it out and let me know in the comment section below using the link in the description. And hey, if you do find all of this concepts cool, but don't have an IR blaster in your smartphone, you can just add them externally using a 3.5 mm jack. Trying so hard to not make an Apple joke. The external IR blaster that plugs into your 3.5 mm jack actually retails at around $10, but it has some very bad reviews on Amazon. So it's just your call. Share this video if you like IR blasters and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.